Are you wondering what is this quiet quitting trend that we're hearing a lot about in the last few weeks? My name is Andrea Horvath. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm a career coach and I help people transition to careers that bring them a greater sense of joy and fulfillment. And this whole notion of quiet quitting that's been coming up on the news lately is not really news to me. This is something that's been increasing. I mean, it's been going on for years, but really increasing over the last couple of years. And now we're really just starting to see it in the news. I watched actually a couple of news clips to hear kind of what people were saying. And, and actually what I'm hearing is fairly reasonably accurate to what I have experienced in dealing with clients um, and people supporting people one on one. In this video today, first of all, I want to share context around what's happening, why it's happening, where it's going. And then also I want to share three tips for you. This will be the end of the video or later on in the video. Three tips for you if you find yourself in that experience where you're really disengaging from your work, disengaging from your job and looking for more purpose and fulfillment. So I want to be able to give you some actual tools to help you move forward. So why is this happening and why is it happening now? Well, certainly we all know the last couple of years and you know, really two and a half years now has brought a lot of change. People have had a chance to look at what is working in their life and what isn't and are discovering that this whole notion that we're just supposed to go to this job that we don't like and suffer just to make money is is really not resonating with people anymore. People are tired burnt out, exhausted. They are tired of feeling no energy at the end of the day. They are tired of feeling unseen, unheard. They are tired of not feeling connected to their work and just feeling like a cog in the wheel. And I hear this from so many people. I mean, I don't have to look at any news stories to know this is how people are feeling. This is from me talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. This is, I hear this all the time, burnt out, feeling like a zombie. I mean, these are the things that I hear. People are tired, people are tired. And we've been really building up over the last 10 years. You know, the corporate world has been demanding more and more and more and more and more from people. We've really got to this place, you know, before the pandemic started where companies were really, really entrenched in profit over people. And we could all feel this, right? And there was some level of acceptance but now people are, are tired of it and they're more and more exhausted. I mean, I think there's this general physical and mental fatigue, like people just can't go on anymore. So what do they do? Will they just check out? That, that's what we're seeing right now. So in the news, they're mainly talking about that I've seen anyways, sort of your generation, you're looking at your 20s and your 30s who are doing this, but I can assure you it is happening in every generation, in every decade of people in the workforce. What's happening is we're starting to hear it more from the younger generations. I have been working with people who are more in their 40s and their 50s who are looking for a career shift. Now, they are starting to disengage because they are tired and fatigued as well, but they're not able to necessarily just quit their job and look for something else or talk about it openly, which is we're seeing with the younger generation. So they're doing this more truly silently where they're not telling anybody they're doing it. They've told me they're doing it, maybe some of their close friends and family, but they're not openly talking about it. And this is why it's being skewed more towards certain generations. But I can assure you it's happening at all across the board because I, I work with these people. But what's happening with some of those people who are a uh, little more middle management leadership roles is they're planning their exit strategy. They're actually figuring out what to do next, all the while staying in their role and just trying to get through as best they can. So that gives you a broad overview. So this isn't something that's going to go away anytime soon. We are going to start to see those people exit the system. So they're quietly quitting now. They will be exiting the system 12 to 18 months down the road. A lot of these people are starting their own companies, their own consulting companies, um, leadership coaching, all kinds of different things. They're just tired of the grind. 
tired of giving up the best years of their life, the best hours in their day for something that is not bringing them a sense of joy and fulfillment. So what it's really demanding and what all this action is demanding is that companies rise up, leaders rise up, doing a better job, putting people before profits. You know, I've heard people talk about, you know, who's to blame for this, companies are to blame. Yes and no. Okay, first of all, companies are just people. <laughs> so, you know, we could say companies are to blame, but that kind of impersonalizes it. It really is ourselves and us all buying into a system, right? We actually have the ability to change. But there's a couple things that are going on here, and that's not how I want to start to, to talk about the tips because there are two paths that are really happening here, and there's two different trajectories that people are taking when they start to quietly quit. So the first tip, and I'm gonna jump into those tips right now, the first tip I want to give you is to start looking at what is the reason why you are quietly quitting? Because there are really those two paths. The first path is where you are just exhausted you might be burned out um, from being overworked, maybe even putting in a lot of hours, and you've been you know, pedaled to the metal for far too many years and you're just tired. So quietly quitting for you might be putting up some boundaries, putting up some boundaries with your employer and your work about when you are available, how many hours you're willing to put in. Um, it's also energetic boundaries. Like, are you thinking about your job seven days a week? Are you thinking about it in your evening? And this is for people who actually have really enjoyed their careers up to this point. They've really loved it. They still feel this sense of, I really love it, but I'm just tired, just tired. And in those that situation, put up some boundaries that could really, really help your energy levels and your feeling of motivation and being able to, to engage again. You know, we're not robots. We can't keep going at this pace that has been demanded in many companies in the corporate world for many years now. We just can't keep it up. It's not sustainable. It's not realistic. It's not healthy. So if that's you, if you're generally feel I'm pretty happy about my career, but just feeling tired, really look into putting up some really, some, some firm boundaries. Um, there's, there's lots of information on how you can do that. Be strategic about it. Um, don't go in gangbusters right away with tons of boundaries right away. Start slowly and, and build your way up. Now, the second scenario is if you are qu quietly quitting, could be that you've just realized that what you're doing is just so not in alignment with you. You're just like, oh, this is just not what I want to be doing. I hate it. I'm unhappy. I've been happy for a while. I'm just maybe admitting it to myself right now. I'm starting to admit the effect this is happening on my life. And so... Um, just know and just being aware that there's, there's two different paths here. It's really important to distinguish because what you do past that point is really important. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what to do if you're that second person. You're just feeling like, I just don't even like this anymore. Um, a little bit further on in tip number three. So tip number two applies to whether you are either of these two people. Okay, so whether you're a person who just needs some boundaries or whether you're a person that just completely out of alignment. In both scenarios, you're quietly quitting. Put a time limit on this. Don't just decide I'm just going to disengage and this is just the way it's going to be forevermore. That's not a way to live. And what I can tell you is weeks turn into months, months turn into years, and years can turn into decades to be really truthful. And if you just accept this is just the way it's gonna be for my life, it's, it's not really setting up for a really great life. You cannot have a really um, kind of a sad career and just being really disengaged and not enjoying your career. When you consider how many hours you put into it, it's a big part of your life. You can't be so unfulfilled in that part of your life and having joy and fulfillment everywhere else and just having this full rich experience in life. It doesn't really work that way. So now if you are person number one and you're deciding, you know, you're going to put up some boundaries, give yourself a time limit on 
how how much you need things to shift and by what time so say okay in three months i need to feel better i need my organization and my leaders to be able to respect my boundaries you know if it's a constant battle of you putting boundaries and and whomever you're working for or working with is constantly trying to just push constantly back on your boundaries and you're not getting anywhere and you feel like you're still that hamster on the wheel, but you're a hamster on a wheel now trying to put your boundaries up and keep them up, it might be time to look for a different place to work. You may just not resonate with that company anymore, but give it a time limit. Is it three months? Is it six months? Time can really creep away on us if we don't give us ourselves that time limit. And what do you need to see change? How do you need to feel? Because at some point you want to be able to re-engage more. Give yourself that rest, right? But if a year down the road, if you're still not engaged, there's, there's a bigger shift that needs to make. And do you really want to wait a year? It, it was eight months, a more reasonable time to start looking at what other things you could be doing. You know, and something to keep in mind is that it's never really a good idea to just jump jobs without figuring out what it is that's not working. So if you're that person, you're putting up boundaries and you've tried your best. I mean, you've really tried your best, but this, this organization, this, this um, group that you're working with does not want to respect that. Well, you've done all you can do. And then it's time to leave. The problem is if we don't actually implement boundaries and we just say, oh, I'm going to go somewhere else. Problem is we take ourselves and our patterns with us. And that scenario is really likely to repeat itself until you learn the lesson that it's really you that needs to shift, you know, your boundaries and what you're willing and not willing to accept. Now, the same time limit also applies for the person who realizes they're out of alignment. So if you realize I am just out of alignment where I am, give yourself a time limit and give yourself a plan on how do you plan on changing your circumstances? Because staying disengaged and just continuing on that path again is not a, it's not a joyful path to continue on. So it, it's gonna take some, well, I'm gonna get right to tip three, and that's why I was hesitating there, is, is some introspection. This is for both, both people in both scenarios. It's going to take some introspection to figure out what it is that you need to do to change. So that person with the boundaries, you know, what, what kind of boundaries do you need to implement and what do you need to do? Because we can't, we can't expect everyone else to change all the time. You know, we have only control over ourselves in any situation. So what can you do? What kind of things can you implement? How can you change to try to make this scenario better for you in your life. Now, the person who is seeing that their career is no longer in alignment with you, this might take some deeper introspection. Because ultimately, what you want to figure out is what is not working? What is it about where you're at, what you're doing, what you're experiencing? What is it that's not working? Because the value is lies then, the flip side of that is what do you need? Because that's where we really want to start to focus is what do you need? But that often can be told through, you know, really analyzing what's not working. Because you really need to start to get really clear on what it is you need, what it is you want. Um, I have created a guide and it's actually five steps to go through, questions to ask yourself, things to think about if you're realizing you need to make a change. Because we really have to get clear before we take steps and you know start changing jobs, start doing something different in the physical, while you're quietly quitting and you've pulled back your energy from where you're at, is to spend some time really getting crystal clear. What are your values? What are your success needs? What are your beliefs? What kind of lifestyle do you want? A lot of this comes down to lifestyle. So many people are realizing that 
This nine to five, Monday to Friday thing is really restrictive. They want control over their own time. They want freedom over who they work with and when they work and where they work, right? What is the lifestyle that you want? So I've created this guide. It's giving you all kinds of questions to think about to get, to get those ideas flowing. It also mentions some common mistakes that you want to avoid. It's important to know what to do, but it's also important to know where are some areas that people often, you know, traps that we could fall into easily. And I've seen with many people and all that ends up happening is you waste a lot of time and energy and you get really frustrated, you lose confidence in yourself. We, we want to try to avoid making, you know, too many mistakes, you know, it, mistakes are part of life. But learn from, you know, certainly when I made my own career change and as I work with hundreds of people now, um, there are just some patterns, things that people do and that's um, things we can really avoid. I'm going to put the link to that guide below. Um, if that's something that interests you, I encourage you to check that out. So I just want to do a real quick recap on those three things because there was a lot of information there. So first of all, figure out which person you are, the person who just needs some boundaries or the person who needs to really change what they're doing in some capacity. Now, tip number two is put a time limit on it. Put a time limit on when you're going to figure this out, um, what you need to figure out, and when you need to see results, especially for somebody who's in that, that boundary scenario. Number three, do some introspection. It's all about you. You know, we don't want to blame. And, you know, I do think companies and leaders have some responsibility in this. But if we give them all the blame, we also give them all the power to change. And what it comes down to is it's up to you. Spend some time really doing that introspection, thinking about what you want, what you can do to change your circumstance. Because quietly quitting, you know, it's a symptom. It really is, but it's not a long-term strategy. That is, that is not, um, that is not a long-term strategy that will help bring you fulfillment and joy. It just simply won't. And over time, it's going to get harder and harder to, to manage that. And that's why you know, that time limit is so important. So again, I'll put the link to that guide down below. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe, like, and, and add any comments. I love to hear comments on where you are at, any questions that you have, and all my socials links, you know, to um, my LinkedIn and website, they're all below as well. So I hope this video was helpful and take care. I will talk to you soon.